This is Colin Dixon with End Screen Media, and I'm at the TV of Tomorrow show in San Francisco, speaking with Sam Metheny, who is C CTO of NAB. Sam, last time we talked, we talked about the broadcaster benefits yes. of ATSC 3.0. Are there consumer? Well, there must be consumer benefits. So why don't we talk a little bit about the consumer benefits? So what's the big picture for the consumer? Well, I think that uh, the key to any broadcaster benefit has to be the consumer benefits. Yeah. And first and foremost, you mentioned big picture. Uh, ATSC 3.0 is going to enable broadcasters to deliver 4K. Uh, and that is something that is not possible with today's standards because there's not enough capacity and the compression's not good enough. So right off the bat, we're going to be able to deliver a much uh, better picture. But it's not just about the number of pixels and being 4K. We can also do things with high dynamic range, wide color gamut, higher frame rate. All of these things come together to produce a much richer experience in terms of the video quality. But then I think you have to couple that with what you can do with audio. When we went from analog to digital, we went from stereo to 5.1 channels of audio. When we're going to Next Gen TV or ATSC 3.0, we can do over 22 channels of audio and do it in an immersive three-dimensional audio system, such as Dolby AC4 or MPEG-H. Right, and you know, funnily enough, that a lot of people watching this video have already bought Ultra HD yes. and HDR TV, yeah. and there's not much they can watch on online right yeah. now. So uh, this this will be a pretty big innovation when we can actually get it. Yeah, no, I think that uh, a lot of that has to do with how content is produced today, and that uh, once uh, you have broadcaster adoption of it, there will be a much uh, richer library of content that's available, and it'll really take off. Now uh, this. Um, we, we talked about expanded bandwidth um, in, yes. in our last uh, last podcast. Does that have any, have any consumer benefits? Well, of course, because one, it enables something like 4K to be possible. But uh, additionally, you can do more channels. So you can have a greater diversity of content that's available to the end user. Uh, and so you could do multiple high-definition channels, or you could do uh, uh, many different standard definition network channels. You could target them to different devices and screen qualities. And so lots of opportunities as it relates to creating a, a richer diversity of content, right. given you've got a bigger pipe and that you can squeeze more into it. And in fact, at this show, Sinclair, we're talking about expanding from having six channels per region yes. to 20. So yeah. broadcasters are really looking forward to to leveraging that increasing increasing bandwidth. Yeah. Um, tell us about the experience. Will the experience be better for consumers? Yeah, I think so, because one, you're, again, you're going to have better pictures, you're going to have a greater diversity of pictures, but consumers are also going to have more control. Because uh, ATSC3 or Next Gen TV is based on internet protocol, we can also do things such as deliver content in the background, not just the audio and video, but file-based content. So now you're talking about things like video on demand. And, uh, and then there's the marriage of broadcast and broadband. And so that enables you to deliver, let's say, an application via broadcast that within it uh, links to content that would Online. be delivered yeah, yeah. via broadband. And so as a consumer, you don't really care is this piece of it coming from broadcast and this piece of it is coming from broadband. What you know is that you get a really custom experience. And if I may, I'll give one quick example that we worked on with Fox, and that was uh, around the idea of a multi-view experience where you can customize your viewing experience. And with Fox, we work on sporting events where the broadcast piece is, is clearly the main feed, but you may, uh, if you're following a race, be able to pick the driver that you want and follow them in particular. And now you've got this blended experience with some of it coming over the air, some of it coming online, and all you know is that this is awesome. And perhaps one of the most important benefits is it brings with it the traditional reliability of broadcast, right? Absolutely. Broadcasting is a one-to-many technology. You can deliver to millions of people simultaneously with no buffering, no breaking. It is the, the most reliable form of, of content delivery today, and it's only going to get better with 3.0. And where it's beginning to start the process of, of being rolled out here in the U.S., right? It is. It is. We're operating a test 
gas station along with the Consumer Technology Association uh, up in Cleveland with Tribune. Uh, Capital Broadcasting has a station on the air in Raleigh, North Carolina. Sinclair Broadcasting has a station on the air in Baltimore. Uh, they're also operating a single frequency network in Washington, D.C. And we've got numerous, numerous other stations that intend to launch uh, shortly after the FCC enables stations to start broadcasting uh, in 3.0 without the need for an experimental license. Sounds like an exciting time in broadcasting yes. and lots of good things coming consumers' way. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I will just add that Korea is already on the air. And, uh, and LG and Samsung are both selling 3.0 enabled sets in Korea. So that's a harbinger of things to come elsewhere. Fantastic. Thanks very much for, for explaining absolutely. all that to us, Sam. All right. Thank you. Thank you. This has been Colin Dixon with Endscreen Media.